Good afternoon. Today is the 19th of June, although I expect you'll see this um, a little bit later after I film this. And uh, it's time to do a uh, 12 bump for 6,000 mile report on our 2003 River 45 2 litre V6 Connoisseur. I think the last uh, video we did on this car in terms of an ownership report was probably back in January, the same location we were at as well. What have we uh, done since then? Well, this car's had an awful lot done to it in the year that we've owned it. The mileage is now about 71,000, when we got it about, about 65,000. The logbook shows that the ownership transfer happened in July 2020, that's actually not true. Um, we think that the uh, place where we got it, they didn't do the ownership transfer of it and, until a few weeks after actually it was sold, which is about, I think it was 8th of June 2020, that we picked it up. It's been a little while uh, having some work done to it by Mr. Coleman, rubbish mechanic. In fact, he actually came with me to collect the car in the first place. One of the first things we did on it was uh, new tyres. It's also had two sets of rear brake pads because one of the calipers was really sticking. That has also been replaced. Recently, uh, my friend Jordan, Mr. Partridge, has put brand new brakes in the front as well. You can actually tell this car's a V6 in the front because of the plinth of the number plate. The Porsche models don't actually have that, although a lot of the features on this car are quite similar to um, other models in the range, where well, the V6 badge gives it away as well. These are called the Cosmos Alloy wheels. One of the things we had done on the car immediately was new tyres. Three out of the four tyres were on the car wouldn't have passed an MOT. So those have been done about 6,000 miles ago, and so were the front wiper blades. Again, they weren't in great condition when we got the car. In terms of the inside, we haven't really done that much to it, apart from changing the radio in it. Originally this car had a Becker sat-nav um, radio fitted, and this is a very unusual steering wheel in the 45, because normally there are steering wheel controls here for the audio system. However, they aren't present on this car, and we think that's because of the Becker sat-nav system. I do have the original radio. Uh, this Sony unit uh, is actually a replacement. It was put in by one of my viewers, actually, in um, July 2020. Um, it's a much more practical prospect for modern-day motoring because it's got both USB and AUX input, and also uh, it's got Bluetooth as well. So it's just better than this Blacker sat nav unit really for you know the fact that we actually do use this car quite a lot and it doesn't just um, go to show, it, it does actually get used virtually every day. Glove box in here will show you the fact that that's the original owner's manual. Let's pull that out of the way. This is the original owner's manual. It's also the service history, which is very common on MG Rover cars at the time. And there, I think, is the massive manual in there for the Becker sat-nav system, too. Post-late 2002 45s all have this kind of same fake wood effect. Um, but I think the fake wood was a little bit better on the uh, earlier 45s after the car was introduced in, in 2000. This car suffers from, obviously, Project Drive syndrome, which means that some things have been deleted. Uh, one of them would be the illuminated key ring which isn't there, and neither do we have wooden door caps on the front doors, which would have been standard at the time. The Connoisseur was the top trim on a 45 at the time, and the V6 was available as a club or a Connoisseur. This is a Connoisseur, and so we've got things like cruise control. These leather seats, they are different to earlier 45s, which were more like a 75 style. And um, we do have the uh, cruise control bits there as well. This has the later type steering wheel and the later type white dials. The car is actually also uh, Euro 4 emissions compliant, which means that it can go into the London optional emissions zone, but not the Birmingham one, sadly, which is ironic because this car was made in Birmingham. Door cards are sagging, but that's what they all do on uh, these cars. I would turn the ignition on and show you the clock, but actually even so, you can probably see Bridgets aren't even there. That's a very common problem on these cars, and I just can't be bothered to fix that. I just use the clock on the radio. That's fine. 
heated seats as well in the car and air conditioning. That all works. The air conditioning was regassed, I think, again in July 2020. A uh, five-speed uh, Jackco uh, transmission. It's not a CVT in this car. It's a conventional automatic. I don't normally put the handbrake on too much. I do sometimes, but of course it's an automatic, so you can just put it in park. But there is, sorry, the window switches are in a very strange place in this car. They're normally in the centre console, apart from the driver's one, which is there. It's very strange. I'll just release to boot. Taking these chrome kick plates on the doors. The boot's got various bits in it which we've had to sort of do to the car over the course of the time we've owned it. Uh, more engine coolant and then we've got bits from the service, um, some gaskets and uh, the old spark plugs that were taken out. Actually the spark plugs on the, on the car weren't too bad. Um, they'd only been in there for 6,000 miles and we put exactly the same type in. That was the old inlet manifold, I've had that replaced um, with another one because they do, they do actually go bad. Also got a spare uh, tyre under there. The car did not come with a spare wheel at all. I think it had been taken by the dealership was selling the car for another one of the MG Rovers they were selling. Let's take a look at the back as well. It's actually not that bad in terms of space in here. Um, if you have the seat in this position, if you have it in, in my driving position there, there's hardly any room at all. Um, this rear bit here is just starting to sag very, very slightly. I think we could just glue that up, to be honest, or put a pin um, just in that back there. It's not a problem, really. You can adjust the, the height of the seat belts, and we have rear electric windows. Door cards in these cars get in the rear like the front. They do sag. I do plan to get some at some point, but it's not really a priority at the moment, particularly. And also this clip on the... See, my buckle is to come adrift. It shouldn't be quite like that, but again, it's not a huge problem. I'll probably just clip that back in. There is a centre armrest, and it's it's very nice, very nice indeed. I think you can fold the seats on this car, although I've never personally tried myself to do it. Now they do actually split and fold. I think it's just there. Levers creaking today. Because this is a uh, pre-facelift car, the um, rubber strips on the side are supposed to be this black colour. The facelifted cars did actually um, have a, 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 a either like a chrome or a colour-coded strip there, but of course we have the chrome mirrors which marks this out as a connoisseur. It was also on, on some special editions that have got chrome mirrors, but I think they look very, very smart indeed. It is a nice looking car. They are, they are getting rare. There were only 700 of these made and uh, in the time that we've owned this car, which is just, just over a year, the numbers of these have gone down from about 90 to about 80, which is taxed on the road. There are some which um, are on sauna, though the numbers haven't really gone up very much in comparison to the ones that have gone. So because of reasonably low second-hand values for the for 45s, and the V6 is worth a bit more than a normal one, but they're not worth that much more, unlike an MG ZS180, which is a very closely related car to this. They're just often not worth repairing. You don't really um, own a 45 V6 for the low running costs or the low maintenance. You own it because you like it and uh, you know we like it although things like you know the the, the, um, uh, the under chassis uh, uh, rust treatment has been done on this car. It wasn't too bad but they tend to rot actually uh, underneath the passenger foot well in the front uh, this car's been treated, so it's not doing that anymore. It wasn't that bad, but we had it done anyway. Um, and uh, yeah, the sills go as well. This is this car's actually fine. Let's have a look under the bonnet, though, to see what you know marks this out as a unique car in uh, this chassis type. Now, this car is actually closely related to uh, the early 90s Honda Civic, uh, the uh, EG type Honda Civic, and we had an EG4 Civic on the channel in no budget reviews, uh, which was um, uh, towards the end of last year. It is related to that, but the Civic 5 door that was sold in this country and in other parts of uh, Europe is, is more closely related to this. Uh, that shares all its major components with, with this type of car. They call it the HHR chassis, it's the same as the uh, late 90s Rover 400, the MG ZS from the early 2000s as well. 
the V6 is actually unique to a, a 45 V6. The one of the engines that's 180 is a 2.5. This is a 2 litre, generates 150 horsepower. This is Raver's own engine. It was developed during the era that BMW owned them, um, but it doesn't really share any elements with BMW at all. See the spark plug wires at the front of there. The other ones are a bit more difficult. I think you have to take the inlet manifold off to do it. And uh, my friend Jordan, who um, also services this car along with Mr. Colin Rubbish Mechanic, um, has had this inlet manifold off so many times, it's ridiculous. But they do go wrong. There is like a sort of variable valve timing system in them, and that tends to fail. There's a butterfly valve inside them, which are made of, pla which are made of plastic, and uh, you know, butterfly valves actually start making a horrible noise, and uh, that's when you know you're inlet manifold on the way out. It's non-fatal really. You can drive a car like that for quite a long time but eventually it will it will kill it off. So it is really the best idea to get one. And this came from a fellow member of the Rover 45 and MGZS um, owners club on Facebook and I, I pay you a hundred pounds for this. Thank you again Jason. It was very very handy. It came off from an identical car to this actually so I knew it was the right one. Uh, Jordan's just actually just serviced a car for me. Uh, we've renewed um, the thermostat housing you can't actually see it it's um, buried in the V of the engine this is the second one this car's actually had in my ownership because the original one blew up last July spectacularly all over a forecourt when we we're picking up a Sanyol Tivoli um, it's kind of in, in here you can't see it with, with this cover on at all uh, but it is in there we've also had um, part of the cruise control uh, system replaced um, that was made of plastic, it's now been replaced with metal. Again, you can't really see it, but it's kind of here. Yeah, it's about there. Um, that originally was a plastic part, it's been replaced with a metal part, thanks to Jordan as well. And we're just keeping an, an eye on the, um, on the coolant level at the moment. It's still just finding its level, having had the thermostat housing replaced. Um, I've used a lot of coolant in this car. Cam belt was done in uh, 2018, I should, say, I should say cam belts, there are three of them in this car. It's a very, very expensive job. Um, anything from five, six hundred pounds upwards, really. So a lot of these cars have been scrapped just for that reason alone, because of the expense of doing the cam belts on them. The engine's not the most economical thing to ever be. I think we've been getting about 26 to uh, 29 miles per gallon in this. But then, it's a 2 litre V6, I mean, what exactly do you expect? Uh, 0 to 60 in, the, in this car is about 9.5 seconds. Yes, yeah, so we've done all kinds of things to this car um, since the ownership. It's not been the cheapest thing to run. Uh, tax is also, I think it's £340 a year now, to tax this car. So they're really not the cheapest things to run. Although they have some advantages over Rover 75 in that they're actually a bit more resistant to corrosion in a lot of ways. And um, they offer... Uh, a bit more space to work on the engine, if you can believe that, which is quite crazy. Um, maybe the design's not to everyone's taste. It's a sort of facelift of a facelift, really, uh, one of these. So it's maybe um, not something that's for the but I, I don't know. We really like this car. Despite the lack of rear passenger space, despite the high running costs, and despite the problems we had with reliability, we, we actually really like it. And I think that's all we have to say. I forgot to say one thing, but the thermostat housing in the car was supplied by DM uh, GRS, who are actually a local supplier of parts to MG Rover owners um, in this area. I haven't got any sponsorship of, from, um, from them or anything like that. I'm just, uh, you know, grateful to them for supplying the upgraded thermostat housing kit that I've got called the Kaiser System. It's a, a metal thermostat housing, whereas the original one was a plastic, and so so was the one that was. Uh, um, temporarily in the car for about a year. Um, the metal one seems to be the best um, of all of them and it's only available through them. Um, so uh, yes, if you look up DMGRS on Google, I'm sure you'll be able to um, pick one up and order one. They, they can sort of take a while to get here because uh, the only supplier is, um, is overseas of them, so you might have to wait a little while, but it can really help to keep these cars on the road a little bit longer. So. Um, Thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the, video, uh, to the channel for more videos on this and uh, lots of other rovers. I've had, gosh, MGZS 180 on the channel, multiple Rover 45s. I think we've had three others. Um, a post-face of 
and a preface of 1.4 and, and a preface of 1.8 as well. Um, and also uh, we've had the uh, HHR Type 400 saloon. So uh, yes, um, I will uh, continue to um, enjoy my uh, wooden leather experience or fake wooden leather experience. And uh, I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. Uh, social media links are in the description below. Thank you.